Our scripture lesson today comes from John's first letter, chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth, and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence, whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask, because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the Spirit he gave us. This is the word of God for the people of God. When John wrote his letters, he was probably writing when he was in exile on Patmos. It was a time of persecution for the church. It was also a time of false teachings. False prophets were everywhere, specifically teaching Gnosticism, the idea that Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh but came only in the spirit, and that there was some mystical knowledge that you could obtain which would get you to heaven. And as you read through 1 John especially, you can see him going over and over and over those ideas that are false and what the truth is. Because to John, it was a great concern for him that the believers of the churches understood how we know that we are saved because people were falling away. They were listening to false prophets, to antichrist, to those who were teaching false knowledge. And they were not teaching the truth, which is what the gospel of Jesus Christ is. He, and starting in verse 19, you know, these verses are sort of the central point of this whole letter. And in verse 19, he says, This then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. See, like I said, John understood that truth was Jesus. Jesus himself said that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So when John is talking about knowing that we belong to the truth, he's saying we know that we belong to Christ, and that we can put our hearts at rest because we rest in Christ. We rest in his presence. We have salvation because of that. Now the next verse when he says, whenever our hearts condemn us. Well, is there anyone here who has not at some point in time said, how in the world could God love me? How in the world could Jesus have died for me because of what I have done? What I've done is so awful. How in the world could I be saved? And John says, if your hearts are condemning you, if your hearts are doubting, if your hearts are saying that you're too guilty to be saved, God knows that. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows every single thing you've done, every single sin you committed, and he took care of it on the cross. God knows you. God is greater than our doubt. God is greater than our guilt. God knows us and he knows what we have done. And he did the one thing that was necessary so that that guilt could be done away with. He sent Jesus Christ to die on a cross so that through his blood we can be cleansed. And when we no longer have that doubt, when we no longer have that guilt, we know with confidence that God is with us. 
we have the confidence of his presence. And we know that when we come before God, he will give us what we ask if we believe and obey him. Because what we're asking is in accordance with his will. And what is his command? Well, his command is twofold. The first is simply believe in the name of his son, to believe in Jesus Christ, to believe that through Jesus you have salvation, to believe that Jesus was who he said he was, that he is indeed the son of the living God, and that he did indeed come for the purpose of making the atoning sacrifice for our sins. The second part of his command is to love one another. To love one another. Now when we do that, in verse 24 he tells us, if we obey his commands, then we live in Christ and he lives in us through the power of his spirit that indwells us through his spirit that is with us constantly reminding us of whose we are because we belong to Christ. But what does that command to love look like? Well, he starts off this passage describing that. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Now, most of the time when people think about that, they like, well, Jesus died for us. And we ought to be willing to die for our brothers and sisters. But you know what? Dying is easy for somebody. What's difficult is to live for them. Dying is a one-time thing. But living for them takes every moment of your life. And that's what he's getting to when he says, if anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. See, the type of love Jesus is talking about and John is talking about and God talks about, it's not a love that we have on our own. It's not something we're capable of by ourselves. It's something that only comes through the power of the Spirit. <coughs> See, that type of love is selfless. It concerned with others more than the self. One of the books I've been studying lately <coughs> says that to love is to will the good of the other as the other. In other words, to look after someone who is in need, to love them in spite of who they are, excuse me, effects is a dry throat <clears throat> but to love to will the good of the other as the other it means that you love them and supply their needs no matter who they are no matter where they're from no matter what they look like and no matter what the need is and you do it without expecting anything to change you do it because God has called you to love. It's not some kind of emotion. It's an act of the will. It's an act out of our duty to obey God, which means we have a duty out of love to meet the needs of others. It requires actions, not words. In the early church, we saw how that was manifested. In Acts 2, we read, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, 
to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. You notice the actions that are described there. They're giving to others. They're learning God's word together. They're worshiping together. And they're serving others. They're placing the needs of others above their own needs. And you notice the rewards. God worked wonders in that church. You read through Acts and you see all the wonders and miracles that were performed by the church. And you see the impact they had on society by the fact that they were added to their number daily. People need to be loved. People need to be loved in that unconditional way that God loves them. And that's what the church is called to do. They're called to love each other, even closer than family, in order to be a beacon of love that the world can see. See, God loves us with so much love that it can't help but overflow. It's like we've got a bucket, and God keeps pouring love into that and fills it and fills it until it's overflowing and reaching out to others. And when people see that kind of love, when people see that it is what they need, people are drawn to it. People are drawn to love. The kind of love that only comes through the Spirit's presence in your life. Now we still see that kind of love today, and we still see that kind of duty today because it is a duty that we have to love and I thought about what would be a good example of someone reaching out to others who were in peril out of a sense of duty forsaking their own safety and the best example I could come up with was 9-11 and the firefighters that rushed into the tower 2,753 people died in those towers. 343 of them were firefighters. They didn't know the people in those towers, but they had a duty to help, to reach out to those who were in need. Some of those firefighters were older, some were young, some were experienced, some not so experienced. But they had been prepared. They had on their uniforms, their suits. They had the equipment. Well, they didn't really think about it. They just went in. They knew people were in peril. They knew the peril. They understood the peril. But put the lives of those other people ahead of themselves and went in to rescue as many as they could. And they died. They died trying to fulfill the duty they had to save others. That's what Jesus did. Jesus knew that the only way that we could be saved was for him to come and suffer the way he did and then die on a cross. That was the only thing that would save us. He came into the peril of a world ruled by sin and death and saved us as he went to the cross. How do we show that kind of love? Philippians tells us 
Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, and note that term, united with Christ, we are part of him through the Spirit. We are joined with Christ. If any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather than in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but to each of you to the interest of the others. That's what we do to show love. The love we have for each other first. Are we loving each other the way God commands? Are we putting the interest of other people above our own interest? And then showing our love for others in the world. And do they see the love we have? Are they drawn to it? There are thousands upon thousands of people out there living in peril right now. The peril of a world ruled by sin and death. And there is only one way out of that. Jesus Christ. We are the first responders for Christ. We are the ones that have that duty to go out into the world to rescue through the power of the gospel. So, do you have any doubts about your salvation? Do you ever wonder, how could I be forgiven? We all do at times. Just remember, God knows you. And God loves you more than you could possibly be loved by anyone else. And out of that love, he has shown you grace and mercy, and he forgives you in the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't have those doubts, that's great. Because you know your salvation. You are assured in your salvation. You know that you are in Christ. You are in the truth. You are in his love. And that just means following his commands to believe in Jesus and to love people with our actions just as Jesus did and just as Jesus commanded in John 15 as the Father has loved me so have I loved you now remain in my love if you keep my commands you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. To believe in Christ as our Lord and Savior and to love others as he loved us. That's how you know you're saved, is to obey those two commands. And be assured of your salvation. Because God has done for you what you could not do for yourself. He has brought you out of a world of sin and death and into his kingdom of light and life. Through Jesus Christ. And it is our duty to take that love out into a world to rescue those who are perishing that they too might know his love and that they too might have the assurance of salvation that we do. Amen.